I now turn to you, Jacques, for a few thoughts. Again, as I said, from an informed outsider, if you, you allow me to call you that way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Thierry, for the invitation. And just a caveat to state the fact that views expressed here are my own and not involving any organization with which I uh, collaborate. Um, just a few excerpts from my daily medical literature uh, review uh, over the last few weeks. Um, two weeks ago, the FDA approved uh, the most expensive drug ever, 3.5 million per patient to treat uh, hemophilia B, a very rare disorder, and uh, which uh, affects just uh, a few uh, patients. Um, at the same time, almost at the same time, in the wake of COP27, uh, 230 medical journals published an editorial calling for uh, urgent action, urgent climate action in the interest of healthcare, pointing out the terrible increase in the burden of uh, disease induced by global heating, mostly in poor countries. And The Lancet added a comment stating that many countries still provide subsidies to fossil energy, uh, which are potentially higher than the health budget. So we see that governance uh, may be improved. And, and finally, there was a flurry of articles uh, criticizing health governance, culminating with a very good article dat dating back to February uh, this year by uh, Jean Pisani Ferry and, uh, and the Bruegel team. And the title is uh, explicit. It says, uh, Health Governance, a Forensic Analysis. So, uh, is uh, governance really dead? Uh, I think it is not. Uh, I'm not going into the history of WHO the creation back in uh, 1948, the uh, uh, declaration of Altma Atta back in 1978, then uh, Astana declaration in, in 2018, calling for the rollout of universal uh, health coverage in line with sustainable development goals. But, but I do think that, uh, I mean, uh, although WHO has been criticized uh, uh, for, I mean, mostly for uh, political reasons, um, it, it did a good job with uh, former pandemics. Uh, the globalization did a good job by, because it really took number, uh, millions of people out of poverty and, and improved the healthcare system, the healthcare, sorry. So, uh, so I think uh, criticism is, uh, is uh, certainly uh, in excess. Also, there are a number of, uh, of levels for uh, additional governance. The regulatory governance works very well. You know, agencies collaborate, and we've seen how efficient they have been uh, to uh, approve new uh, vaccines. Um, there is a level of international governance which uh, has an influence of healthcare and which is heavily criticized, which pertains to intellectual property and uh, which has to do with sovereignty, with uh, science, uh, with scientific policy, with economic policy, and certainly will uh, have to address this in later uh, panels, but, but I have no time today. And uh, then we all know that all countries do try to uh, have a governance of the health system with very varied means, but which all resolve to cost containment. There are other angles of governance, uh, moral or intellectual, scientific societies doing a very good job in their discipline to kind of disseminate good practice uh, based on, uh, on, on, on science. Uh, but by definition, they have no mandate to, uh, prior to propose to prioritize between uh, various disciplines. Uh, stock markets exercise a governance on, uh, on health uh, product and technology manufacturers, but they have an obvious bias, which is shareholders' interest. And finally, we have philanthropic and humanitarians, uh, humanitarians on the terrain who, who too often have to establish a governance of their own because, I mean, they really have to do a triage between uh, uh, immediate calls. So how to improve the, uh, the edifice? Well, m my plea is that before thinking of structure, we need to really agree on metrics because it's very difficult to measure healthcare. Actually, once you've gone out from, from mortality, it's very difficult. Um, then I would really encourage institutions to agree on objectives and to submit those objectives to, uh, to uh, uh, democratic criticism and debate because it 
always ends up in allocating <coughs> too scarce resources. And so the need for the population to accept this is, uh, is very important. Um, I would certainly uh, advise to um, governance to you know, relinquish the power in, in healthcare to health professionals, because my, my 30 years experience actually with uh, healthcare is that it's much easier to turn a doctor, uh, to teach a doctor in economics or mathematics or management than to take a lay person, uh, a kind of an administrative or a business person and uh, teach them medicine. So, uh, and, and, and very often the power in, in countries uh, in terms of managing budgets is far too much in the hands of uh, the administration and not enough in the hands of the, uh, of the physicians. And as mentioned, I'm not a physician. But I, I love the physicians. So my, my prescriptions, in uh, summary, to uh, kind of uh, keep time uh, in line. Um, once again, work on metrics. I mean, really measuring health is a difficult issue. And uh, reinforce epidemiology. Uh, I think uh, epidemiology is a science at the crossroad of uh, mathematics and uh, medicine. And it's essential to really understand I mean, and, and propose the appropriate metrics. Uh, educate the population. I think this was mentioned in the previous panel. And, and because the, the choices are so difficult, we need to educate the population. Uh, turn the power to uh, health professionals. And finally, I would definitely advocate for decentralization and turn the power in as much as possible to local players because they often know better than the people who are in the offices, in the central offices. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jacques. So now um, I must confess I have a problem because we started this session 10, 15 minutes late. And I'm told that we have to stick to the um, schedule and therefore we have no time, unfortunately, for discussion. Uh, apologies, because I was looking forward to a discussion. So um, with apologies, please uh, let me just uh, give um, a very short conclusion from what I've heard in the previous and in this session. One. The world is not better prepared today, December 2022, to face a new pandemic as uh, compared or hardly better prepared than it was in 2020. Second, a number of processes have started. Many of these processes, including the negotiation of a treaty, the negotiation of a new global health strategy in Europe, the negotiation of a political resolution at the UN General Assembly are slow, cumbersome, as, as Anders said. And yet, as many of you have said, including um, Lionel, when it comes to some of the regional innovations, um, these processes are opening new, encouraging perspectives. <coughs> Third, there, is a, there are two key issues in global health that we and preparedness, pandemic preparedness and response that we still not uh, have clarity on. One is governance and the second is the financing. And clearly the uh, international financing facility, as it called, that was recently established is far from being where we would like it to be. And my last point is that I hope that as a public of the World Policy Conference, uh, you realize that health is not just anymore about health. Health of, is, of course, on the health agenda, but it is on the development agenda, it's on the global security agenda, it's on the economic agenda, it's on the social justice agenda, and as we heard from Christian and the One Health issue, is it's on the agenda of all of the interrelated crisis uh, in which to which the world is currently confronted. So with that, please join me in thanking our panelists for this. <laughs>